Hey guys, today we're going to uh, learn about solving radical equations. Um, please excuse my voice if I cough a little bit because I have a, quite the cold. But hopefully we'll get through this. Alright, here we go. Okay, so we're going to solve the square root of x minus 10 equals 0. So we want to find out what value of x will work in this equation to make it true. So what you really want to do is you're going to want to isolate that radical because you notice the variables under the radical so we need to, in order to find x, we got to first isolate that radical. And this first one, it's pretty straightforward. To isolate that radical, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add 10 to both sides. And we get the square root of x equal to 10. Now that we've got that radical isolated, what we want to do is we want to get rid of that radical sign so we can find out what x is. Well, to get rid of that radical sign, what we're going to do is we're going to take that square root of x and we're going to square it because the square root of x is what multiplies by itself to give you that number. So you're going to multiply something by itself to give you x. But whatever you do to one side, you also have to do the other. So we also have to square 10. Nice thing here is the only thing we have under the radical is x. So we now know x equals 100. But you really should always double check your answer, make your answer to make sure it truly fulfills um, and is a solution for the equation. So if we look at this and plug in, the square root of 100 minus 10 should equal 0. Well, is 10 minus 10 equal 0? Yes, it does, so it checks. So we know x does equal 100. Okay. Now, in this next example, we have a little bit more than x under the radical, but we still started out the same way. We need to isolate that radical. So we're going to add 2 to both sides. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> to isolate. Oops, 3. <coughs> Excuse me. 3x plus 1 equal to 8. And now that we've isolated that radical, we again, to get rid of the radical, we need to square each side. So we're going to square the square root of 3x plus 1, and we also have to square 8. So we end up with 3x plus 1 equal to 64. Now, it wasn't like the first example where you had x already all isolated, so you just have a little bit more work to do, but it's really not too hard. We're going to subtract 1 from both sides. We get 3x equal to to 63, divide by 3, and we get x equal to 21. And again, you should always double check it, and if you think about it, it would be 3 times 21 plus 1, you take the square root of that, and then minus 2, you should get 6. Well, this would be the square root of 63 plus 1 minus 2 equals 6. Well, this is basically the square root of 64, or 8 minus 2 does equal 6, so we know we got it right. Let's look at example 3. Now, this is a little different, if you notice, looking at this problem, as we have an x under the rattle and the and x <coughs> on the right-hand side. But we still basically start the same way. Now, what's nice about this is our radical is isolated. So the first thing we want to do is get rid of that radical. So we do have to square each side. So we're going to take that square root of 4x minus 3 and square it. But we also will need to square x on the right-hand side. So we have basically 4x minus 3 equal to x squared, <clears throat> which is a quadratic equation. So to solve this quadratic equation, what we want to do is we want to get standard form. So I'm going to bring... So basically we're going to have 0 equal to x squared minus 4x plus 3. Just bringing that 4x and the 3 over to the right-hand side, because I like to keep my x squared positive. It makes my life a little easier. And then we can factor, like we have been. All right, we get x and x. My signs are the same. So then they're going to both be minus. And we're going to have 3 and 1. It's kind of nice that 3 is prime. So we'd have x minus 3 equals 0, and x minus 1 equals 0. So x could equal 3, or x could equal 1. 
Okay. And again, you really want to check your solution. So kind of like here is the square root of 4 times 3 minus 3 equal to 3. Well, this would be the square root of 12 minus 3. <coughs> Does that equal 3? And the square root of 9? Yep, that does equal 3. And also you should check 1. The square root of 4 times 1 minus 3 should equal 1. Well, this would be the square root of 4 minus 3. Does that equal 1? Well, yep, the square root of 1 does equal 1. So both of these check. Okay, now let's look at this last example. Let me move it up. Okay, again, we need to isolate our radical. So we're going to start out by subtracting 9. And I get the square root of x equal to a negative 9. Now my uh, radical is isolated, so I'd square the square root of x. And I'd square negative 9. And I'd get x equal to 81. So let's check this. Okay. So we'd have the square root of 81 plus 9 equals 0. Well, square root of 81 would be 9. It's 9 plus 9 equals 0. It's not equal. And since it's not equal, we therefore know it is no, there is no solution. So this is right here why you need to check each answer to make sure it is truly a solution for your radical equation. Okay, we'll work with this a little bit more tomorrow, guys, uh, uh, and work with radical equations.